I'm Therese Clark, and I am the CEO and founder of Lady Sweet. We are one of the first modern feminine care brands to focus on the importance of vulva skin health. That is vulva with an A, not vulva with an O. It is not a car. <laughs> Your <laughs> interior of this car. <laughs> Just letting you know. Um, it's the external skin that is that comprises the, the vulva on the outside of the vagina. So that's something I want to make clear. Um, and we're trying to help undo stigmas and tired taboos that se separate us from our whole body health. Mm -hmm. And we love that work and we love Lady Sweet. So we're mm -hmm. so excited to talk today about vulva skin. Um, so can we start off with how is vulva skin different from like the skin on our stomach or the inner thighs? Like how is that different and need to be taken care of? Especially? Yeah, you know, it's, I'll, I'll say this first. If you have a mound of pubic hair, you might not even be attuned to your vulva skin. And, and that's totally fine. And I think a lot of times it's not until you have some sort of hormonal change, like, you know, perimenopause, menopause, or, you know, even like postpartum after pregnancy that you would even be attuned to it. But a lot of times the gateway drug, I'll just say into like understanding your skin or knowing that it even exists is probably an ingrown hair, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so the skin is much thinner. It's the thinnest skin site on the body. Um, it is near a mucous membrane, your, i.e. your vagina. It's more warm and moist. Love the word moist. Love it. <laughs> Down there, the it's hair horrible. follicles. <laughs> we'll just repeat that word a couple of times. Um, the hair, how come moist is okay for cake, but not okay for when we talk about vulvas? Um, you know, but that's a good hair, question. <laughs> the hair follicles are actually larger. So not only is it um, more absorbent because of it's closer to a mucous membrane, but it's more absorbent because the hair follicles are larger. In addition, it's a more acidic pH and pH gets thrown around a lot in um, skincare. But essentially, if you think of, let's just say a water-based product, and if, if the, on a scale of zero to 14, if water is neutral at seven, basically anything you know, below seven is more acidic, anything beyond is more alkaline. And you know, our skin is more acidic here because there are good bacteria that make something called lactic acid. Um, and lactic acid is, you know, more acidic and that keeps the bad bacteria away um, and, and feeds the good bacteria. So, you know, we, it's, there's a lot going on down there, you know, for a small surface area, it's like a, it does so much for us. And I think, you know, part of, you know, subconsciously why I probably got into this is because I just didn't know much about it. Um, and then, you know, it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind, or you suffer in silence. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So with the vulva skin, so obviously when we think about like the vagina, I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, of course the inside skin is very sensitive. Like I know because I know, yeah. I know, but so the outside skin is sensitive as well and has like a pH. I guess does all skin yeah. have a pH? I have so all many skin questions. has a pH. It has an acid mantle where good guys like to live, but we've been so overexposed in other skin Part, parts of our body that, you know, a lot of times that acid mantle or that barrier gets uh, compromised. And so if, like, if you think about, you know, um, it's, it's one giant immune organ, it doesn't stop right, you know, at your che chest, it mm -hmm. keeps going. And that, that comprises your, your vulva as well. And I think, you know, if you, like I said, if you have a, a mound of pubes, which good, great, um, you probably, you have your protective padding, you're not going to see as much you're not going to probably experience a lot of like shaving issues that, you know, 60% of women develop more chronic irritations from just shaving alone. Um, but I, the last stat I read was like 84% of women either have groomed down there or are grooming down there in the U S. Um, and so a lot of us develop something, you know, probably first from shaving. Um, I was different cause I had a hypothyroid condition in my late twenties. And it just fucked up every, I mean, my hair fell out, eyebrows thin, gained a bunch of weight, but then the first signs were really in my skin and down there did not care. It was like, you know what? I'm taking you down too. <laughs> um, and so that was like my first foray into shit. Like what, what is going on? And then I sort of peeked at the femme care part of the industry that I've been in for a long time. And it wasn't, it wasn't pretty. Oh gosh. That is, you guys got a one, two punch with that one. <laughs> but I guess that's what led you into your future career. So 
Yeah, I mean, <laughs> for it, I guess. No, some good things happen out of painful struggles and situations. Mm-hmm. But you know, I learned so much. I in my research. Well, first of all, I have a mom. Mm-hmm. Thank God she's still alive, and she's an OBGYN, like labor delivery nurse. Has never said the word vulvar vagina in front of me ever. <laughs> oh wow. Never. He is old school, Asian Catholic cannot, you know, there's soap opera on some people, someone's kissing. She leaves the room. Like she's just not, she's, you know, not from the United States. Originally she's from the Philippines. It's, you know, like they just didn't talk about women, let alone women's, you know, lady parts. Um, and then I had sisters and we weren't like the kinds of sisters, like the Kardashians that like show, like show, like we don't do gynecological exams on each other. (laughs) <laughs> you know, um, which if you do great, that's awesome. But, you know, so we weren't sharing information either. And so I just went into a world of research and found so many of us have insecurities, not just pain, but like, is my labia inside the lips inside? Like, are those weird? Am I a different color? Mm-hmm. What if some dude told someone that she was really like, oh, um, yeah, this doesn't look right compared to what I see on porn. Mm -hmm. Um, I had one guy tell me once that he loved my vagine area and you would think I would be like, yay, but it made me like, oh shit, do I have a fetish? Like what's happening down there? So there's all of these things. Yeah. And they might not affect you, but they affect a lot of women. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You. Well, yeah. So kind of in that same realm of like normalization, because that is somewhere that we've gotten in that's somewhere we've gone in other episodes, but I feel like we don't really talk about the vulva skin itself. So what does like healthy vulva skin mm-hmm. look like? Sure. I mean, all skin, you know, like your skin looks different than mine on my face, on your, like mine, probably a different skin tone. I I'm a different skin texture. We work with, we've been working with our advisor, um, Dr. Lily Talakoop, who's a, a dermatologist, and she's also validated. There are different skin types down there. So you could be a little more oily. Like if you have more of your hair and then, or if you live in a humid climate, you have more oil that probably is down there. And then if you're somebody that works out a lot or you have sweaty situations, um, and then there's someone that's more normal, you know, and then someone like me who just dried out pretty fast. So my skin became, you know, kind of rough, dry, made ingrowns like so much worse and they were becoming chronic issues. So I would say even more than things look other than if you're seeing bumps or more severe redness, um, cause some, some of those happen and then they fade. But if you're seeing more chronic, like redness, irritation, some people have eczema, some people have psoriasis, um, it can be just as hypersensitized or as hypersensitive as skin on faces in other places. Oh, wow. It's like its own little ecosystem. ecosystem. Yeah. You mentioned but, oily. So does that mean that you can get acne? Oh, yeah. Well, the skin. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, if you think about like an ingrown yeah. hair. Yeah. Yeah. They're different. Ingrown hairs, our hair grows back into the skin, but it's sort of the same. You have the inflammation in the hair follicle, the bacteria, and then the combination of dead skin cells that haven't been exfoliated. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden you've got this bump and, um, and sometimes that bump can go away just like a zit. And then sometimes it's cystic and you're like, Oh hell. Um, the hard part about that is like, great. Do I have a golf ball size cancer? Do I have an STD? Like, do I have right, freaking yeah. warts? Like what the fuck's going on? And, and that's the scary part is when you're in your head and you start Googling about those kinds of right. things. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie. I'll put myself out there. Like I've told, like, I, I didn't even remember that until you were asking about like acne. Mm-hmm. I've totally gotten like whitehead type of yeah, situations exactly. on like yeah. the lips or on my bikini line or something. And I never knew if that was like something I was like, I was doing wrong or if that was normal part of the skin or why it was even happening. But that's crazy that it can be more oily or like it has its own skin. Well, type. it makes sense. You always got it. Like for the most part, you're like covered yeah. up and it's all like yeah. suck. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're not letting it breathe very it breathe. often. Yeah. 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 So how important can I turn, is it to let your, can I turn the tables? Like, yes. do you, do you groom down there or do you just like kind of let it, do you go in and out? Or do you like, let it go? I groom mostly. I mean, sometimes when I'm like in a more depressed state, I'll let it go. Um, but definitely groom. <laughs> I, know, I totally know what you mean. And yeah. it's not just let that go. It's we let everything go. Exactly. That's, that's more of one of many things that happen yeah. in those states. But, um, 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I used to shave and I actually just prefer more hair down there. So like when it gets super long, I'll use my manscaped like lawnmower to like trim it up. But no I just way. prefer, and it, and it still has hair. Like I just prefer having hair 24 seven for the most part. Yeah. And, and you're not alone. I think there's so many, many more um, people that have decided to, you know, keep their pubic hair where, you know, I'm from, I'm Gen X. I'm, I'm like a little older than everybody. And it was kind of became a thing in college where I just shaved everything off and like kind of kept it off. And now, and then I did waxing and then laser. And now I kind of wish I'd kept a little more it grows back like harry potter's scar now like the oh my, God. my hair is like what the fuck i don't even know which way to go like so it's weird but you know there's nothing worse than i've lived in a, a beach town and then you know if i have like pubes sticking out like that's not mm-hmm. fun um but like i said it, it's the skin is still there and you know if you don't i would say if you don't have a problem great but it's when you have a problem and then you're like, what do I do? Mm -hmm. And it's not like you're going to make a gynecologist appointment every time you have something. Um, But obviously if you're having more chronic things happening down there, like abnormal odors or these, you know, irritative bumps that just won't go away, then that's your cue, like to get help. But most of the time you can, there's things that can help now where there wasn't yesterday. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And is that what you mean by, we saw on the website when we were looking into Lady Sweet that your vulva skin is hormone responsive. So is that what Mm -hmm. that means, what you're explaining right now? Yeah, I mean, yeah, a little bit because there's a few things that can trigger some skin surface sensitivities that we can see and then sometimes that we can feel. Some of those are physical stressors, some of it's psychological stress or emotional stress, and some of it's hormones. So during different like parts of your cycle, you may dip in estrogen or you may have more estrogen. Um, or when you get into perimenopause, menopause, you just don't make enough circulating estrogen and you start to lose like skin elasticity. A lot of the same things that happen when we age. And the reason why we don't talk about aging or anti-aging, because the point is not to, I mean, maybe for some women, which is great, not to like take wrinkles away. It's really to make support the skin because she, he, they skin goes through a lot. It, it just does. It, it's one of those areas that, you know, we're wiping all the time, you know, we're having sex, we're pulling tampons out where, you know, like think about your day. And I've seen my niece who's like eight years old to squirm. She's like, and I'm like, what's wrong? She's like, my vulva itches and burns. And it's because she like had sand in there and now she's, you know, and then she'll just do a layer of the oil and it's great. By the way, I don't market to eight-year-olds. I'm just saying <laughs> she's my niece. She's, we have moms that's using it on babies, cool. like the um, yeah, that's oil on like skin, baby skin and things like that. Mm-hmm. But um, it's not so much that we're marketing to teens. We're just saying there are options out there. So we've just gotten accustomed to just like, we'll get over this itch or we'll get over that. Yeah. this and but you and you can get over it but you don't have to you can you can there's some things that can help you mm-hmm. that was a huge epiphany for me because there have like <laughs> if I'm being honest there have been so many times in my life where I'm like oh but I'm just like uncomfortable yeah. right now or I just like I have an itch and it's just uncomfortable and I just like have to be in the fucking meeting that I'm in mm-hmm. and just like make <laughs> eye contact with these fucking guys that will never understand never understand and no. I'm, like sitting here with an itchy vulva yeah like, yeah, we shouldn't have. No, to you, they can move their balls around and they don't care. Exactly. But we can't like, we can't stick our fingers up there and start itching, which I have, um, you know, but I, I think like, it's, it's one thing if you just have an itch, it's another thing if you're always feeling itchy or yeah. your pH balance is just off and you know, something's off and it might not even be a yeast infection. It's just, there's some pH things happening, you know, where you used a, you sat in a bubble bath or a jacuzzi too long. You know, you're wearing the wrong underwear. <laughs> Can a jacuzzi really do that? Because of the chlorine, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, there's some, Wait, you know, there's... jacuzzi that much, but just. Was... Yeah, there's, it can, and I love, I would, I can be in one for two, three hours at a time. And I just know I'm going to pay, probably pay for it because I'm more sensitive, but certainly some women don't feel a thing. And it's like, sometimes some people have perfect skin and they never have an issue. Mm-hmm. And some people do, it's sort of the same. It's no different. It's just that our vulvas usually have a lot of hair on them. And in these cases, most of them are sensitized because they don't um, or because they're going through different life stages. Right. And then diabetes, endocrine disruption, like the hypothyroid, like me, chemotherapy, cancer, like 
that changes your whole skin anyway. Um, but you can't use what I use up here, down there. A lot of ingredients right. are too harsh and not just unnatural ones, natural ones too. Mm -hmm. um, they're in too high of percentages. So it's not like you can put 10% vitamin C down there or ret like, you know, a retinol down there. So it's also, you know, what am I putting down there? What's the percentage? What's the pH? Um, am I hurting? Am I doing more harm than good? And that's the, all the questions we have to ask ourselves and knowing that the skin might be constantly sensitized by, like if someone's razoring, like using a razor three or four days, maybe more a week, they're annihilating their skin barrier and they're just going to be more sensitive to any ingredient. So that's something we have to think about too, is, you know, the more you perturb or, you know, hurt your skin barrier, the more it's like, ah, I'm too weak now. I don't know. Wow. I wasn't allergic to bananas yesterday, but now I've been I'm allergic to bananas because you threw no me banana. up big, you know, it's kind of like your diet. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, it's used to this thing. And then all of a sudden you, you know, maybe you got the flu and then you're immune system is building back up and then you ate something and it went through this hole in your gut lining that you've eaten before. And all of a sudden your immune system's like, eh, you're in the wrong place. We're going to make a memory. And now we don't like you anymore. So next time you eat something, you're like, shit, how about, how did I become allergic to this? Crazy. You know? Wow. Yeah. There's a lot of science yeah. is being dropped. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much, I have so many. <laughs> One of those. So you started to go into some of the things that you know, do cause irritation, just everyday things that we're doing, wiping, taking out tampons, all of that. Are there any other things that we do on a daily basis that you're like, oh, if you could do that a little less, it might help? Yeah, I think if you're using, I'd rather, you know, like a lot of OBGYNs will say, don't use anything. And like, they're, I'm sorry, I'll just say it. A lot of them don't even know the skin. Um, that's why we dermatologists test. I like OBGYNs. I think some are more progressive. Mm -hmm. but really their training is like internal and about babies and STDs yeah. and, and, you know, so that's an area that gets overlooked. It's kind of like, um, like I said earlier, if you're using like crappy tampons mm -hmm. full of fragrance, or you're using like your, you know, body wash, that's too alkaline down there, it's going to start to itch and burn over time. Um, so like, I'd rather you do nothing than use a bunch of perfumes and deodorants and things like with a lot of synthetic fragrance or, you know, irritants. Um, mm -hmm. And then not, don't use it. You don't use your tea tree oil in an essential oil bottle down there. You will burn the mm -hmm. shit out of your skin. Like has to be formulated, right? <laughs> like there's a lot of my hippie friends who are like, I put garlic down there and then I don't know what happened. And like, maybe like, don't do that. <laughs> Just because it's organic or natural or like limited ingredients does not mean that yeah. it is safe. What are your no. thoughts on jojoba oil? We love it. I mean, I use it. Organic jojoba oil or jojoba oil mimics human sebum very closely. So okay. it's why like you can use it if you have acne skin. Um, so we want to use things that your skin knows, but loses over time. And that's kind of the goal when we're formulating. So so much better, better to baby your skin than it is to annihilate and over exfoliate. Mm -hmm. So I'm cool with it. Cause it's not like an essential oil. It's more like one of those um, oils that has a lot of fatty acids, omegas. And those are things we lose quickly. Like you look like these, these components that comprise your skin barrier, these fatty acids, these moisture rich lipids and, you know, things you'll have to look up later. Um, these we, we need these because that lipid barrier is right under our acid mantle. It keeps water in, it keeps things like, like visibly looking nice. Um, it, it's part of your, your skin structure. And then we lose like 30% of those lipids by, or like 40% by 30 and like 60% by 40. So, you know, that's why so many, um, I think wellness or skincare brands say supplement with omega fatty acids, eat salmon because our body doesn't produce those easily on its own. Okay. Omega nine is the only one, but omega three, six, we don't make those. So it would take you a lot of, you'd have to eat a shitload of plants and nuts and meat or whatever your mm -hmm. poison is to get those omegas, but your internal vaginal canal, like your vagina likes them. Um, and then your external skin likes them. And so we make sure we formulate with things like jojoba because they're rich in those, those lipids. Okay. Yeah. I use, yeah. I was told by a nurse, um, to use it when it's like my vulva is really itchy when I'm having, mm -hmm. um, when I'm having my yeast infections, cause I used to get them <laughs> so much. Uh, so she suggested using jojoba oil and it was like a life changer 
to me as like another thing I could use like in between like medication, if Mm -hmm. whatever. I like Um, her. She sounds, she sounds like she knows what she's talking about because you think about, um, yeast infections, I have type one diabetic patients and they're, they're, they have a lot of circulating sugar clients. I should say, I'm not a doctor and they, um, (laughs) not a doctor (laughs) or the record, but, um, they, you know, you have a lot of external itching that happens. It doesn't just happen on the inside. And so I'm not saying put jojoba up inside. Maybe she mm-hmm. can say that, but your external skin needs some soothing and some love too. Um, and instead of like some of those steroidal creams or things that they work fast, but then they start to compromise your skin over time. Mm-hmm. I really want to get into more about like the lady sweet products and building like your vulva skincare routine. But I do have one quick question. Do you have a toilet paper that you really like? Oh yeah. 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 I I'm, it's so funny. Cause my husband buys like the Trader Joe's he's like from mm-hmm. Oregon. So he wants to save a tree. And like, we try to practice sustainability too. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't like scented toilet paper, like of any kind. Um, and I'm not, mem- I'm not memorizing this brand name because he buys it, but it's not the thin papery kind. And it's not the thick, thick quilty kind. It's like sort of right in the middle. So I'll make sure that I send you that name, but it's such a great question. Just don't pick anything that is like so soft that it stays in the labia bit. It's like the exactly. folds and the crevices. Cause that happens by the way, that skin's like that to trap dirt and debris. Um, and, and just, you know, the vulva is the external part. That's not self-cleansing. Right. The, the vagina the herself. <laughs> yes. So no, no one's going to come clean that for you. Um, but your <laughs> vaginas, most vaginas are self-cleansing. Like I have mm-hmm. transgender friends that those, their vaginas aren't they're, they're you know, um, you know, surgically created vaginas and those aren't self-cleansing. They have similar mm-hmm. epithelia, like similar skin, but you know, so these are the things that we're, we're thinking about, but yeah, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, there's, I still haven't found my perfect underwear. I would love advice on that from you guys. We're still trying. I'm still trying. (laughs) When we find one, we will definitely let you know. Yeah. My favorites have been that like, what is that material? The no seam material. Oh, you know what? I will say Mm -hmm. I love NYX. K-N-I-X. I love Nick. Okay. I've only gotten their period underwear, but they are so fucking comfortable that I am Thanks going for to Nick. their regular. Nick's? Okay. Yeah. It um, is 10 out of 10. I just wrote that down. Here's the thing. What I don't know what happened, but the crotch got like thinner. Yes. yes. So now it's like lip cleavage and I hate mm-hmm. that feeling. I don't understand yeah. why that happened. I guess my dryer, but yeah, all of my underwear on like my lacy ones, they just get thinner and thinner. Oh. And then I have a thong on both ends and I'm just like, I don't know what to do with this. I feel like no, the next like, ones are wide enough. Okay, good. Cause that's what I'm looking for. The, maybe we'll make the Spanx of underwear crotches because mm-hmm. you know, I just want everything just, just, just hold me in. Exactly. Nice. Hold me in. And br- yes, like and breathe, but mm-hmm. also feel supported. Yeah, Held right. Free. <laughs> Absolutely. That's all I want. Right. And then also on the same thing is with toilet paper. I feel like I've asked this with someone else before, but I don't remember. Um, what is your word on um like wet naps or like what am I thinking? Oh, like wet wipes. Wet wipes. Like when you okay. have when people have those in their bathroom. Like is that something you use instead of toilet paper? Is that something you use just when you're feeling like you need a little I don't know. Yeah. I mean sorry. I love that. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> we'll just turn that one up. That sound of that. Um you know it really depends. I think the big controversy with any feminine cleanser was first of all what's in it, you know, is yeah. it hurting or helping? because the conventional care, um, big box brands for so long told us to douche, um, which is completely douche baggy. Like you're not supposed to douche. And then they also said, you know, you smell, so you need flowers and you need to smell like, you know, you just came out of like bath and body works. So first and foremost, like what's the solution in the wipe, right? And then the wipe itself, fine. You can use a wet wipe. I think the big controversy in beauty like the clean beauty side is like, is it sustainable? Is it biodegradable? Mm -hmm. Are the wipes, you know, just accumulating in our oceans? Um, So that's why I sort of backed away from it, but believe it or not, that's the most requested thing are wipes. Like women just like to travel with them. They like to feel fresh. Um, 
even the word fresh is kind of a controversial word, world, word in vulva care. It's like, you don't need, I don't need to feel fresh. And it's, it's really up to you how you want to feel, but really it's just about, you know, if you're somebody that prefers a little bit more than water, um, and some water is compromised, some water is, you know, too neutral for some people, then great. Find a wipe you like, just make sure it doesn't have a bunch of crap in it. Mm-hmm. That's a good tip. Okay. Mm-hmm. I didn't know if it was like an overall answer on how like a hard, no, yeah. Hard, no. Or like it can be gentler if you're wiping and you're just feeling a lot of friction down there. Um, which I have definitely gone through phases where I'm like, what's going on? Oh, wow. Why am I wet? like where I've been on cleanses and I'm just peeing so much. And then all of a sudden I'm like, dude, it's mm-hmm. like, I'm raw down there. It's because of the damn toilet paper. And then I'm doing wiping every 20 seconds. Um, that's where I would like pat, use the patting motion, mm-hmm. um, or, you know, use a, use a wet wipe. Mm-hmm. I was going to suggest the patting motion. I was like, sometimes, cause I go to the bathroom all day. Like my bladder has turned yeah. my father's bladder. I have, it's like this big. Anyway, your prostate <laughs> is just, it's just really, you know, but, um, so, so, yeah. on, so, so like on a road trip, you wouldn't be the best person to bring them like a cross country. Yeah. Me yeah. too. It's gotten um, sad. Not gonna lie. I mean, if you apply the same logic we do to babies, like I've never seen any mom take a toilet paper roll out and wipe her kids. You know, they, she, they always take a wet wipe and it's kind of like, why did we stop that? Yeah. <laughs> why did yeah. we decide that adulthood had to be so abrasive? Yeah. <laughs> That's so true. That's so true. Why do I have uh, to suffer just because I'm older? Like that's right? the worst. I hate being. Well, adult. if you ever decide to make wet wipes, we'll, we'll be first we'll in line. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, <laughs> we're debating on doing the solution that you make a wipe out of whatever you're Ooh. using. Or do we put them in the wipes? Um, TBD. Mm-hmm. I like that idea yeah. though. That's mm-hmm. also really cool. Mm-hmm. In yeah. the realm of cleansing. So something that we've talked about before and kind of gotten, you know, like a no, don't put anything there unless it's a very mm-hmm. sensitive soap, which even then I have trouble with because I'm like, which soap is sensitive? Which yeah. soap is sensitive enough? Is it like a bar soap? Because mm-hmm. no, no. And I just, yeah. So can you talk a little bit about cleansing the vulva sure. as well as yeah. your cleanser? So, you know, uh, we weren't really going to go into hygiene. The first product we did was the oil. And I was kind of staying away from hygiene because I know the controversy and OB guides and, and just like germs have been with like new skincare brands that are not medical. And, Mm -hmm. and I always say to each their own, but soap tends to collect more bacteria. So, and they have like, you know, certain ingredients in some soaps, a lot of OBs will recommend Dove or something like Dove sensitive. And I'm not going to put down any brand because I think Dove's smart enough to do the right thing, but soaps tend to sit in your shower and collect a bunch of bacteria. So that's why I don't like to use soap. And a lot of times they can leave a film, um, yeah. or, you know, feel like a little drying on the skin, not all soaps, but most, I stopped using soaps in like seventh grade. Um, just wasn't for me. Cause I just share a shower with five kids and like, that's just like the, the worst aftermath of a soap you've ever seen yeah so (laughs) you know it's just not cute that soap um so (laughs) some soaps are not for me and so when we were developing a cleanser what the point wasn't to leave you squeaky clean we actually got had a customer call and said I like your cleanser I feel better but it doesn't leave me squeaky clean squeaky clean usually means it's foaming a lot um it's sudsing and it's going to take some of the that natural moisture that we need especially down there um so we made it so we don't soap like it doesn't suds there's no bubbles and there's no foam um because it's about just a gentle wash to take some of those bits and debris that can collect on the outer parts or even bacteria like that lives on the skin that synthesizes sweat sometimes creates a waste that smells it's like BO in your armpits. Yeah, exactly. It's not because your vag smells, it's because <laughs> you've got sweat and you got the breakdown of sweat by bacteria and it created a waste and that waste can smell like BO. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's more the odor that we're, we're dealing with. Not like, oh God, you probably probably should see your doctor if something's fishy. So right. I would just say most soaps in my personal humble opinion, aren't right for down there. And then pH balance, um, you know, if they're soaps made with water, you know, what's the pH, if it's too alkaline, um, then that can create dryness and itchiness. Mm -hmm. And will all soaps say that on the back, like, will they have that whole 
acidic breakdown? Nah, it's not required by the FDA to call out the pH. Bummer. Hmm. You know? So it's kind of like yeah. a gamble anytime you're trying to find a soap that's right for your body. Yeah. And it, it's, you know, it's, skincare is always going to be a little bit of a gamble because your chemistry is different than her chemistry. Your microbiome is always changing. Right. Your diet changes, things affect your skin. Your skin's like the, like the barrier, but it also reacts to a lot of the things that you decide to do. Um, but most women in their reproductive years have an acidic pH down there. It's when we get more into menopause and beyond, when we have less circulating estrogen, less good bacteria, that's when our pH can change and become higher, mm -hmm. which then might mean an acidic cleanser might sting. Right. So it's, it is a careful, so we, we even say like, hey, you know, this is good for most women, but patch tests, because if you're going through something, um, like at my 75 year old mother-in-law loves it, but we've had one older woman with, who was immune compromised that it was, it was too stingy for her. So it's not perfect, but we try to be as universal as possible, as benign as possible. It's not about being active. It's about caring for the skin. Mm -hmm. And so, um, we know we have a couple more cleansers, um, that we're probably going to create just for specific skin types. That's amazing. Nice. Yeah. I love We've that. both used the cleanser and I can obviously speak for myself. A gentle wash is the perfect way to put mm -hmm. it because you don't want squeaky clean down there because to right. me, squeaky clean means dry, dry. too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are days when it's like a little stinkier, a little itchier. Yeah. And there are days when I want like a little bit of a cleanse. And mm -hmm. so I think this really is the perfect product because so many times you're like, yeah, you can't do anything down there. It's a self-cleaning organ. But that right. was one of my biggest questions was, is the vulva a self-cleaning organ? Because mm -hmm. it doesn't, I don't think anybody's cleaning it down so. there. I think it's my job. I think, <laughs> I think that's me. I, I think, think that, that one's, one's on me. me. I'll tap yeah. in for that one. So it's really nice to use a product that like, I haven't had any bad effects. Like it just right. feels good. Yeah. Well, when you described it as cleaning out like the debris that you mm -hmm. get from toilet paper, from tampons, from your underwear, like whatever throughout the day, especially like if you get her hands from, day. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. like that from his hands or her hands, whoever you're yeah. screwing at the time, mm -hmm. <laughs> they're touching you down there, you know, maybe that's a really good point. Yeah. That's a super good point. after sex. I bet it would feel really good. Too. Oh my God. I totally didn't think it's like when you finally realize that you should like clean stuff. Never mind. <laughs> Yeah. And like, like you don't realize a, that things are touching you and like, you should probably clean yourself. Right. You become or, or, you know, if you're of the mindset, like, Hey, we didn't need these back in the day. Why do I need those now? Great. But if you're someone that, you know, might have someone like you might get oral sex that night or whatever, like yeah. there's mm -hmm. all these things and choices we make that might merit some, like a, a cleanser and you might not need one. So we never force the cell. Mm -hmm. Something you really try hard not to do. It's, you know, is force the cell when you don't need it. For right. me, I love my skincare routine for my face. And I'm sure like back in the day, they weren't using the like 10 fucking products that I'm using my retinoid, all of that stuff. And so it's like, I really like that. I want that for my vulva. I care about her too, just as much as I care about my face. Not as many people see her, Yeah, but, but yeah, I do. Important. And so I deserve that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and it's, and it's like you said, it's like, she doesn't need to, or whatever you labeled your down there. Um, doesn't need 10. It just needs maybe a couple, a couple things, you know, mm, right. Just, exactly. Just a little love more so than, you know, water sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay. if you are sold on this product, which I am, what is your, like, um, what's the process of using the cleanser? So is it just for the outside? Like, how do you use it? Yeah. Um, so it is just for the outside. I mean, I have access to this cleanser, so I like it for multiple areas, but just when you're using it for the vulva, it's literally like, like a dime to a nickel size. Mm -hmm. You know, just like you would in the shower. It's easier in the shower. I've done bird baths in the sink because sometimes you just got to wash what you can. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're not washing your hair or anything else. Um, and, and basically what I'll do is if I'm feeling a little chromosome off down there and I'm itch, I have pH strips. So sometimes I'll like stick or put it around my finger, or put it in there and just see what's going on. Because it usually like after sex, I'm just like, even a few hours or even the day after I'm feeling, I can feel off. And sometimes my pH seems a little elevated and sometimes it is, and sometimes it's not. And I'm just feeling a little itchy, but that helps dictate. And like, if I'm feeling like a little off, I'll just leave that on 
for a minute. Um, we do have some women that are like, I left this on as a mask for a couple minutes down there. And I just really felt like it just kind of knocked out some of that BO kind of odor. Um, we had one retailer who was, you know, going through something and she said, yeah, I was just in a really stressful time. I was going through hormonal things and I started to smell and not in a good way. And I tried chlorophyll. I tried deodorants. She sat and put this in her pits for, um, five minutes every other day. And like, she said, it just like knocked it out. That's anecdotal. It's not clinical. Uh, but it's so cool. But really yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. And um, then we also know that it's a pH of four, which is attuned to your acidic nature down there. So it, on your face, it acts more like an exfoliating cleanser. So if you're acne prone or, you know, oily prone probiotics or the actives in here, the probiotic actives are there's more research in that they they kick up your own antimicrobial peptides, your B defensin. So they help against, you know, acne. They basically in, like stimulate your own immune system to work better. Um, and so like, if you have ingrowns down there, acne, you know, th those kinds of things, um, this could be a good option. We had a, an office do like before and afters on their faces, they the volunteered to do it. And it was incredible. Like the results. Um, oh my God. So yeah. if you can only have one product. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> How Maybe yeah. Is I mean, this, this, this is a good. This is definitely caught up to our oil in terms of sales. I'm not surprised. It's not as expensive, but it's definitely something you can get your head around and you can use it in multiple ways. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know you could use it for like uh like for a minute or like a mask. You know, mm -hmm. I thought it was kind of just like a soap. You do blah, 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 and you wash it off. Mm -hmm. But so yeah, and for most people, it. yeah. And if you're just just remember, if you're feeling a little like more. Um, like itchy or just uncomfortable, or you're smelling things that maybe you that are not necessarily from you know bacteria infections where you got to go see your gyno. Mm -hmm. um, you know, then you could you could try that and see if that works for you because it has worked. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. What about um, using it for your butt? Yeah, use it for your butt. I mean, both the skin is the thinnest sensitive skin, so if it's okay for there, it's likely okay for anywhere else, but, and your, your anus pH is probably a little higher, but it's okay. also underexposed skin mo most, most time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, and it's probably more acidic than, you know, <laughs> um, I've used it on my ass and anus and pretty much all that. I'll just say it. And as I did that today. So I'm glad that that's <laughs> yeah. good. Yeah. That's, that's good. Um, other last body part question for now, uh, from me, testicles and penises. Is Ooh, that okay yeah. too? I mean, we don't, it's called Lady Sweet and, and mm -hmm. rethinking the name, you know, I, I was just so women's health, like mm -hmm. forward. I was so, okay, I'll just tell you. And when I was, how, I don't know your ages, but I was about, when I was going through my thyroid, um, I was misdiagnosed for two years and I live in LA and I went to a pretty prominent place of a lot of them because I was feeling so lost and out of body. It, you, it creates a feeling of depression. There's just so much going on. And this, this doctor, he's like, you know, if you had a penis, we would have figured this out by now. And basically he was kind of joking, but also, you know, saying like, look, you're, you've taken a backseat and, in, and I, I'm lucky I get to work with a, a leading biochemist. He's super brilliant. He's one of the good ones now in his eighties, he took me under his wing, but he always, you know, he's like trying to cure women's cancer and this and that. And he's like, look, it's just what it is. You know, there's not a lot of science on the skin. He's like, but if you really want to do this, you got to smarten up. And I, I'm like, okay. And then he left the room and never came back. Oh like, my God. Wait, wait. <laughs> what, what am I saying? Like, I'm supposed to start up right now. Um, oh, you meant now. Okay. Yeah, like right now. I'm like, shit. Oh my God. <laughs> never, yeah. And he never came back. Um, and to this day, he, you know, he'll just call me up, just rant about something with COVID or some new thing. And, mm -hmm. but it's fascinating. And I wish more, more, um, more people were like him, but he said that most doctors or most, they just look at one piece and they're not integrative and they don't look at the whole thing and how one thing affects the other. And in skincare, if you're inflamed in one area, your cells talk, and then they start to like want to inflame their neighbor. And that's the thing we have to think about is, you know, when we're talking about skincare, we have to do the right testing. We have to understand what are these doing to the actual genes in our cells? And skincare is just like mainstream has scratched the surface. I've, I've got to work with someone who's doing DNA microarray assays, which you'll never remember, but we can see how one, one ingredient can like, you know, help the gene do what it's supposed to do or hurt the genes. And so when you think of like cancers, 
And the fact that like only 10% of like breast cancer is hereditary, then what's all the other stuff? Like, what are we doing to our, our cells? Like, what are we doing um, underneath it all? And it's usually because of something that caused an inflammatory response. So our job is to minimize any inflammation and hopefully turn it off, if not, you know, way down mm -hmm. um, and continue to smarten up. Right. Well, it's mm -hmm. nice yeah. to have someone focusing on like women's health, like ladies. Yeah. That's great to have a product that is focused finally on the labia and the mm -hmm. pH yeah. and what happens bacteria in a vulva and a vagina. So it's like, I'm fine with that. Fantastic. Yeah. I think the only reason it came into my head mm -hmm. is because mine is sitting like it's on a shelf outside of my shower, but I could see my partner who does have a penis and testicles yeah. grabbing it to use it. Oh, if yeah. it's safe yeah. enough for me, any man <laughs> will just grab stuff and use it without reading labels. It so. smells good too. Yes. So it's like, it's but in like not an overwhelming way. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's like yogurty citrusy. Hot. It's, it has some yeah. great. Yeah. 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 That. Which um, makes it feel safe. Uh -huh. like, yeah. yeah. Like people have, you know, those like things of like shove yogurt up there. If you need, oh, I don't know. Have you not heard? Yeah, of definitely. <laughs> Well, she has. Depends on the yogurt, like you know, depends on the yogurt. Nothing, mm. and, and you know, so Bonnie flips. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, men. We have men use our using our products that like love the oil. They love this product too, because you know this is oh. we will get into. But it's you know, it's for it target. It does target ingrown blemishes and dark spots, and mm -hmm. you know, it's a more gentler alt alternative to harsh scrubs. Because a lot of like people with bumps or acne, they'll like scrub. And you can't do that. You can't annihilate the bump. You'll make it worse. You have to soothe the inflammation and, you know, mm -hmm. you know, calm the skin down and not try to scrub something off. So like he, my husband will just steal this. Like this is basically his go-to in, in the brand. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's get into the exfoliant. So I, I just love having a three-step routine that I do now. Um, so how do you use the exfoliant for someone? Yeah. So the two daily items, and we'll get to the oil layer, are these two, right? Okay. So this, this is like basically cleanse on the days you want to, but you know, it's always good to moisturize, especially if you don't have a lot of hair. But if you do have hair, moisturization of that skin is still good. And then moisturize it more, um, softening the skin around the hair follicles too helps the hair, you know, mm -hmm. so you don't get ingrowns. Um, but this, this one was developed because we had estheticians, um, that were saying, Hey, we want an exfoliant, but you know, in our experience, like there's things that are too harsh mm -hmm. or too abrasive. And like, you know, estheticians that they, um, some of them believe in dry brushing, some of them believe in scrubs, but when you have active bumps, I don't care who you are, you shouldn't be scrubbing things. We wanted to do a gentler version of a chemical exfoliator because it will sort of tackle what you see on the surface, but then be able to penetrate deeper inside the hair follicle to mm -hmm. attack the inflammation where it starts in that hair follicle and sort of mitigate that unwanted bacteria. So it's doing a few things. And so this, we put in a spray, which is probably stupid. <laughs> you can't win them all. Can't win because all. I thought it was easier for estheticians. Like that was the feedback. Like they can just spray it on a, a pad, like not the whole pad, just like corner of the pad and just pat it on to things. Um, but I've seen women like think this is a glow spray and it's not. It's, oh, yeah, it's, no. it's even though it's got beta glucan and sodium hyaluronate, this has, you know, lactic acid at 3% at a pH of four. So the more acidic something is, the stronger something gets. So, you know, it's not like 20% lactic acid, but it's 3% and that's strong enough for down there. Um, it's also strong enough when you're more sensitive in other places. It has niacinamide, which is vitamin B3 that helps with texture, fading dark spots, willow bark, which is anti-inflammatory. So it has these great things, but it's not supposed to be like a right. spray you walk into yeah. you know I mean? <laughs> Victoria's secret body spray. Yeah, it's not, it's not that we have women there to like, well, can I just spray it directly on? Sure. But you're just not going to get a focused spray. Cause you don't want this all over right. your labia menorah. You don't, you only want this where like hair meets skin. Mm -hmm. Um, like a lot of, uh, people are using it like after waxing just to, mm. you know, um, we recommend don't use this on the days you shave or wax. Cause you've already exfoliated your skin that day. Mm -hmm. So like, don't double exfoliate. We, you're going to do what you're going to do, but it might sting a little. Cause you've just taken off a layer. Right. Um, 
So we have people use this like before or they're using it like the very next day. But most people I know use it the day of and like do the ouch thing. And then they're like, it's working. Mm-hmm. We're so weird as women. Like if it doesn't sting, it doesn't work. But if it stings, I'm allergic to it. It's, right. You know. It's a fine line. <laughs> Again, can't yeah. <laughs> So yeah. You use the, it as like preventative care too, you know, like if you we can. don't really have ingrowns. Yep. You totally can. And it keeps that area more acidic. It's, it's, it makes the oil penetrate a little bit more. Um, cause you, the oil works better on like a damper skin. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is something I use a couple times a week. I, I use it on my face a lot more because with cumulative um, use of the oil, I just don't need, I don't have a lot of ingrowns anymore, but mm-hmm. I like to exfoliate because your skin does need weekly exfoliation. Um, so two to three times a week, if you have more active bumps or someone with more chronic, you might use it a little bit more on the onset and then you'll back off and resume normal use, but it's just, you can do it at night if you don't want to do it twice a day. Okay. Yeah. Cool. yeah. So if I feel a zit coming on, I'm like, wah, 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 you know, I just, that. yeah. Or, and then some people just use it as a, like an acidic toner, mm-hmm. um, pits, you know, but blemishes, but I can keratosis, use colorosis. I can oh, use it on oh, yeah, our pit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Oh God. Yay. That is so cool. So when I've gotten waxed, I've like, they've always told me, yeah, just do like a sugar scrub after. Is mm. that? Yeah. So what do they mean? Like right after? Like, like the, to pr- like the day after. after. Yeah. yeah. The day after, after is not probably fine. The reason I don't like a lot of sh- scrubbing is, first of all, it depends on how your skin's reacting the next day. But the reason I don't like a lot of sugar is there's glycerin. Um, like sugar feeds unwanted bacteria. Sugar, sugar is a source for like yeast that, you know, yeast infections and things like that. I'm not going to say her expertise is wrong because she knows you more than I do. But I'm just saying like, most scrubs are fine unless you have active bumps. So if you didn't have a lot of active bumps, you weren't feeling very irritated, you weren't very red, then that was probably fine. I did have a lot of bumps and I was really red. So was- yeah, then that was probably, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I don't mean to like debunk. No, like, yeah. the only thing she knows more about me is she's actually seen my vulva, <laughs> yeah. but I, so far yeah. I've spent more time with you. So, yeah. <laughs> so in, in, in that case, are you only using like the moisturizer to kind of like calm and yeah. mm-hmm. that's kind of your, goal? yeah. Okay. So this acts, the, the oil we launched with at a time when there wasn't a lot out there, there were more creams and they were like geared toward more menopause, which I wasn't yet. And, um, and then, you know, there were a lot of ingredients that still weren't great. And then there were a lot of tea tree. There was a lot of tea tree. And I, I personally, I think tea tree is great, but not every day. Um, cumulatively, cumulatively for me. Um, yeah, certain essential oils in me don't, don't get along, but so I wanted to do something that, you know, I'd already had drier skin and most people that are probably grooming have drier skin or some of us that are more aging or, you know, things like that. Um, so I wanted to do something where it was less about essential oils and more about, you know, the, those lipids that I was telling you about. And mm-hmm. so there's a couple of essential oils in here that are just about bacteria fighting because we touch down there. There's still vulva skin. Mm-hmm. Um, but the rest are like really high in those like beautiful omega rich oils, but this acts like second skin. Um, there's also evening primrose in here that helps brighten. Um, it makes the skin really soft. Um, there's meadow foam seal, which is like organic jojoba, but it's really cushiony. It's really like, feels really good. And it's good for hair too. Um, there's an Ayurvedic blend inspired blend in there. That is what turns it that coral color. Um, and that has like an ingredient called, um, eclipto prostrata extract. There's another one called Melia Azerata extract. Those are centuries known for like putting the burn out, like taking that itch away. Um, sesame seed oil. There's like a derm study on like um, people with second and third degree burns and how great it was for those burns. So I worked with a plant expert on this. It took about two years. And then I scaled it in a lab with a FDA eco-certified lab with a woman chemist because women chemists can, she can put it on herself and tell me mm-hmm. um, they know nuance better than some of the male chemists I've worked with in the past in terms of how it feels, Mm -hmm. how, you know, how it functions, how it feels. So 
Um, this oil is really special and I use it everywhere now. I use it on my face every night. Don't be afraid if you are more uh, breakout prone. It's so great because it works with the oils of the skin. Um, so a lot of women are using it pretty much everywhere. Um, but so we're trying to figure out, do we, we may, may need to up the size, you know, mm -hmm. that's something that we're trying to figure out. So the regimen is really just kind of a couple products. This, if you, if you could only do one just to help your skin every day, it would be this, The oil. Um, mm -hmm. you know, the cleanser is like, Hey, do I need a cleanser? You, you know, you can decide if you like something that's a little more than just water, but I would say the daily regimen is like these two. And then your weekly exfoliation would come like every couple days, like do it on a Monday, Wednesday, and a Friday, or do it on a Tuesday and a Saturday. It's like, just depends on what you need. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Wow. It is like the trifecta of like <laughs> beauty and health. I feel it is like. kind of blowing my mind. Mm -hmm. And I love how science backed and researched these are mm -hmm. like, you clearly put in so much fucking work into making sure that these products will do more good than harm, which yeah. I feel like that's not happening that's not enough. Normal. Right. So no, it's, thank it's, you it's, for your service. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. No, I appreciate that. I, I actually had a probiotic skincare line in the medical channel was with a co-founder. It didn't, it wasn't the right, that's a whole other podcast when you want to talk about business partnerships, <laughs> but, um, you know, that, that brought me into this world where it, I really leveled up and, and a lot of medical skincare is, you know, too harsh too. So it was really navigating, you know, what, what does the skin really want? And not every skin is the same. And, you know, skincare isn't a one size fits all. So sometimes you do have to cherry pick or sometimes you have to find the thing that works for you right now, but it might not work for you later. Um, so I understand that. And so we're constantly trying to smarten up and get better on the testing side. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing too. I realized I had one more question about the oil. So if you're applying it to the vulva, do you just apply it oh, yeah. everywhere, everywhere, like on the outer and the inner labia? Yep. You can, okay. or you can just, if you're, if you don't want to, that's okay too. Like during the day, I don't always, um, I'll use it on the outside, but I might not apply it to, to inner labia on that. Cause sometimes I'm just lazy and, or I have, I have to go. Mm -hmm. I love it at night though. Um, and like, let's talk about sex too. Um, you know, if you're sexually active, you know, it's okay to use this for foreplay. It's really nice rather than some dude spitting on his hand and putting it down there. Or even like, if you don't want to feel loopy, uh -huh. um, you know, you can, you can use this and it's just really nice. It's like a nice feel. And then if it goes into your vagina, oils don't affect pH. Obviously, if you're, if you read the ingredient deck and you're like, oh, I don't, I'm allergic to jojoba, let's say like, yeah, then you probably don't want to put this on at all, but mm -hmm. chances are you're probably not. And, you know, and it's great. We have a lot of women all ages, um, saying how much they love it just, you know, every day. And then especially during foreplay. So it's been in mouths. It's been in everywhere. This is the only area where I would say if it's, you know, it has to be made for this area, mm -hmm. but like, if it's good for here, it's probably good. It might not be as active though. So if you're trying to get like a vitamin A effect, you know, our oil is probably not going to, you know, make you peel and do those things, but you know, um, but you can't really use your face and most body products down there. So it's not like it's, it doesn't work the same way. It's not reciprocal. And I think a lot of us in the past, at least have used body products mm -hmm. to wash mm -hmm. and cleanse right. down there. And so the other thing I just popped into my head was, I don't know if this is getting too personal, but I've said well, it's never, not um, never. like when I'm on my period in particular, and I have to wipe a lot, that's when I get really raw. And so I feel like the moisturizer would just be top notch, especially for the taint area too. No, put it honestly, you guys, it just changes the wiping. It just, everything feels just better. Um, even put like, so I TMI, so I'm at now 45 and I have a tight vagina and you think that that would be great. My gynecologist told me my right wall of my vagina is too tight and it's causing discomfort. And then I have, you know, thinner skin on the outside, which the oil really helps. Mm -hmm. Um, but it has made tampon like, it's almost like you, you either like age one, you either go gappy or you fuse together and I'm fusing together. And I really wish I went gappy. Um, but it's making it things like tampons harder. Luckily it's reversible. Like there's some pelvic floor things you can do. There's some mm -hmm. things you can do, but I, for like a good 
year I was like I used to love my husband's penis and now I'm like it's a fucking weapon like get that thing away from me like it's you, know, wanna, you know like I would do Lamaze tactics to like get ready um oh. you know I bought him like a sex toy to mm-hmm. you the know thing. yeah the flashlight it's like, oh. you know, it's, yeah it's a it's like a vulva that I don't have it's the, the kind that actually can take in a penis but like it's these kinds of things you know that you know if I were were alive you know, a hundred years ago, I would have been probably, you know, killed by now. Just, <laughs> so we're so lucky to have all of these answers and options and more progressive conversations. And, and, and like, I think I'm manifesting all these things. So I find a, a better way to, to help, help myself and help other women. Yeah. <laughs> Completely. Earlier, you said, you know, j- we didn't have it back in the day. So why would I use it now? There are a shit ton of things we didn't have back I in the know. day. Like, thank, thank fucking God, God we have That's now. Right? No, yeah. thank people like you. Not yeah. <laughs> and women like you for like having the conversation. Like, that's the thing is like, I can have it with myself all day, but like, you're like actually putting this stuff out there, you know, and not everyone's going to like it, but there's somewhere there's a woman who's like, shit, Mm-hmm. You know, I, I never knew that that existed or, Hey, I, I, you know, I've been dealing with this for a long time. So I think I'm going to call my doctor because maybe she was just sitting on it for too long. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Amazing. Is there anything we didn't really touch on with your products or with vulva skin care health that you would love to, you know, I, I don't think so. I think, you know, again, it's like to each their own, we have a very focused assortment for a reason. We're not putting nine things down there. There might be like a couple more things, but our vision is really to help the underserved and undermet needs of women in a way that, you know, hopefully is better and um, be more accessible. Um, but if you have any questions or if anyone has any particular any sort of scientific question, I'm happy to help her pass it on to one of our, the guy that said smart enough. I can definitely <laughs> give it to him. <laughs> Perfect. Well, where can our listeners continue connecting with you after the episode? Yes. Thank you for asking. I mean, we're pretty active on our, on our um, Instagram. I would say Instagram's our biggest platform and our handles lady sweet underscore beauty. We're not a beauty brand, but that was the only thing available in 2018. Yeah. Um, so we're actually um, changing our URL, URL finally because I finally was able to buy just Lady Sweet back in the day with like nine thousand dollars and like so. So we're in the process of changing things over slowly, but our website's LadySweetBeauty.com right now, and then our our IG handle is probably the best way. Perfect. Perfect. Well, congrats, and I'm sorry it was nine thousand dollars, but it'll be worth it. No, you know. Huh?